Hey everybody, Brian here. Welcome to my lab. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to do a comparison video between two crested gecko kits. Now both of these tanks are set up and sold as kits specifically for crested geckos. We have the Zoomed kit and the Exoterra kit. We're going to do an unboxing video, take a look at exactly what's inside, talk about the pros and cons of both, and decide exactly which one would be better for your geckos. Now, the Zoomed kit here sells for about $115, give or take a few, and the Exoterra kit sells for about $90, give or take a few. So the Exoterra is a little bit cheaper, we'll also take that into consideration. Alright, let's dig right into these two and see exactly what comes inside. Alright guys, first up we're going to take a look at the Zoomed Crested Gecko kit. Now this one comes with quite a bit of stuff in it, let's go ahead and bust it open and see what we got in here. They're kind of a pain to get out of the box. There we go. Alright. Now, the Zoomed tank is a little different than the Exoterra. They're both about the same size, 12 by 12 by 18 inches. The Zoomed, however, has one opening door, whereas the Exoterra has two opening doors on the front. It. All right, now the first thing I'm going to talk about is it comes with this book called Zoomed's Proper Care and Maintenance of Crested Geckos. Now, it's supposed to be a book to teach you everything you need to know about taking care of your gecko to make them happy, healthy, and thrive for a long time. The problem is, I'm not real sure the author of this book has ever bred or even kept crested geckos long term. There's a lot of good information in here, and there's also some we'll call it questionable information. Everything from, uh, it says crested geckos in the breeding section can lay 20 clutches of eggs per year. That's 40 eggs per female gecko. Now, I wish some of my females would lay 40 eggs a year, but they definitely don't. Generally they lay 16, maybe 18, sometimes 12. Uh, 20 clutches a year, they lay a clutch a month. So 12 months in a year, even if they breed year-round, they're not coming near 20 clutches a year. A couple of the other things it lists in here. Um, incubation for eggs. Is this the info is not that great? It says a cage like this should be good for two adult crested geckos. Uh, a cage this size will work for one adult crested gecko. If you're going to put two or more in a cage, you're going to need a bigger cage. I would not recommend a cage this size for more than one adult. And then uh, lastly I did have a good laugh when he talks about the Oreo Morph. There's a little morph guide in here and he talks about the Oreo Morph. I've never heard of that one either. So uh, it's worth glancing through. There's some good information in here and uh, it's worth looking at. But I definitely would not use this as your primary care guide for your new gecko. There's a lot of places to get good care information online. I wouldn't rely on this. Now, first up in here, we have a plant. Plants are vital to your gecko's cage. They need places to hide, to feel safe and secure. This plant is serviceable, but it's not what I would pick. It doesn't have big leaves. Geckos like big leaves, places to hide behind and feel secure. This one has almost like, they look almost like pine needles. I think it's supposed to be some sort of fern. It just doesn't provide a great amount of security, but it's something. I gotta open the top to get this last next one out. Oops. Now this big stick I do really like. Now sticks are great. The bark is rough and that really helps with your gecko shedding. If they need help getting shed off, they can rub against the bark and it helps get their skin off. Uh, it's nice and thick, gives them something good to grab onto, good to climb, and it's gonna be sterile. Now the thing with sticks is you can't just go outside and grab a stick off the ground because it looked good and put it in your gecko's cage. They have to be sterilized. This is going to be sterilized, so I really like this addition. This is nice. They also come with a food and a water bowl set. Now, some of you may have heard that crested geckos, you have to spray their cage and they'll drink the water that way. They won't drink standing water. That's a total myth. Crested geckos will drink standing water. I haven't sprayed any of my geckos' cages for 
eight years now and they all are thriving just fine. So they will drink standing water. This would be a good water dish. It's easy to sterilize, easy to clean, fairly shallow, so you're not gonna waste a lot of water or if they tip it, you're not gonna get water everywhere. And it would be almost impossible for them to tip. Good water dish. The food dish, on the other hand, I would not use. It's the same kind of thing. It's very shallow, very low to the ground. And while it won't tip, being so low, it's very easy for the geckos to walk through it, get food on their feet, and then their food, their feet kind of get stuck together when the food dries. They can't climb on the glass. They have trouble shedding. It causes all kinds of problems. I would definitely recommend upgrading to an elevated magnetic feeding dish rather than using this one. So I would not use this feeding dish. It would make a good second water dish if you had another cage or something, but not so much for food. Next up we have a brick of Eco Earth. Eco Earth is a compressed coconut fiber substrate. You soak the brick in water, it expands, and it's basically dirt, just fancy dirt. I love this stuff. I highly recommend using this. It looks great. It's sterile. It's low risk for impaction because it's so fine. Great stuff. I use this in my lay boxes for my breeding females. If you want something that just looks better than newspaper or paper towels in the bottom, Eco Earth is the way to go. Absolutely love it. Okay, next up in here we have a small tub of Repti Calcium. Now, this would be used for dusting your crickets. When you feed crickets, it's very important to gut load and dust your crickets. This helps them get the right amount of calcium in your gecko's diet. This is not the brand of calcium that I use. I like what I use better, but this will definitely work. It's good. It's solid calcium brand. Definitely dust your crickets with it. And then when you run out, look at the uh, Rapashi Calcium Plus is what I use. I really like that. It's calcium plus vitamins. Great all around dust, but this will work perfectly. Good addition. Very important to have. Next up in here we have one package of Repti Safe water conditioner. Now you'll hear a lot about this stuff, how you need to use water conditioner to remove chlorine and additives and everything that comes in tap water to make it safe for your reptiles. Sounds really fancy and sounds very, very good, but in reality it isn't that important. I've been using straight tap water for all of my geckos for almost 10 years. I've never had a single issue. It's just not that big of a deal. It's uh, more of a fear tactic to go get you to spend money on water conditioner than it is an actual need for the safety of your geckos. You can use it because it comes free with the cage, but once it runs out, I wouldn't buy any more. And uh, we also have a thing of Zoomed's Reptivite. Reptile vitamins. Now, to go along with this, I'm going to show you the last thing they include is crested gecko food. Now, they sell this food as a complete diet. All you need, complete vitamins and minerals, everything your gecko needs right here in this food. Now, while this nutritionally isn't a bad food, it's uh, not very palatable. The geckos just don't like it. It's really coarse, kind of thick. It doesn't mix very well and it doesn't smell very well. So the geckos don't eat it very well. If you want more information on food, and what you should be feeding your gecko, check out our complete Crested Gecko food review video. We go through every gecko food I could get my hands on, review them all, and I tell you guys exactly what you should and should not be feeding your geckos. This is not one I would be feeding my geckos. When uh, you get this cage and this comes out of it, I would just chuck this in the trash and definitely invest in a higher quality food. Now, to go back to our Reptivite, I'm not real sure why they include this, because they give you a food that they claim is a complete diet all the vitamins and minerals your gecko needs, this is it. So what is the vitamins for if their food is so great? I don't understand it. Reptivite, reptile vitamins, it's kind of a general all-purpose vitamin supplement, but not all reptiles are the same and they don't all need the same things. So I definitely wouldn't trust giving this to my gecko. I would chuck this in the trash with the food and again, go pick up a complete diet, something higher quality. Now the last thing that comes in this cage is, well two more things that come in this cage. As you guys can see earlier, the screen top comes off. Now if you can see there's slots right here in the screen top. This is so if you put a waterfall feature or anything that needs power, needs a power cord in the cage, the cords can fit out between this and the back of the cage. You don't have to try and drill through the glass or anything crazy like that. The power cords will just come out right here. 
and then it comes with these little clips that if you need a spot for a power cord to come out you just break one of these tabs off and you've got an opening for your power cord if you're not going to use a power cord you put these clips in there to fill the holes and your crickets or small geckos can't escape through the holes and also it has a background as you can see here I don't think this one comes out yeah maybe it does it's just stuck out with a couple things of glue but regardless it's a good background I'm just gonna leave it in there I'm not gonna worry about ripping it out but a background is important like I said even with a subpar plant like this we talked about earlier you put it up in the corner and now with the solid background and the plant in front of the gecko they've got a hiding space that they feel fairly secure it's still not great but the background definitely helps give them a spot that's a little more secure a lot of people will actually go buy extra backgrounds and put them on the two sides as well just to make your gecko feel even more secure that's optional it's another option it does help but the background's a good addition it's not a great background but it's a good addition <clears throat> now that looks like that's pretty much everything this cage comes with if i can get my lid back on here um overall thoughts on this cage it's good i absolutely love these glass cages <coughs> excuse me I love these glass cages. The uh, the latches on these are a little bit flimsy. I'd like a stronger latch on there just so they don't break. But it does have a spot to put a lock on it so you can lock it if you don't want pets or kids or housemates or anybody else getting into your gecko cage. That works great. It's a little redundant because you can just pop the top right off. So having a lock on it doesn't do a lot but it deters people. I love these cages. I think these are the best cages for keeping geckos as far as the kit as a whole. It's a good place to start. It's definitely not everything you need for your gecko. It's not buy this kit, set it up, and you're good to go. You're going to have to add stuff to it, but it's definitely a good place to start, and it comes with a lot of good stuff. All right, guys, now let's check out the Exoterra Crusted Gecko Kit. Now, this one is billed as for being hatchlings to juvenile geckos. Again, it's the same size as the Zoomed. One adult gecko is going to do just fine in here. If you have more than one adult gecko that you want to house together, you're going to need a bigger cage. These aren't big enough for more than one adult. But it'll do fine for one adult. Now, this one does not come with quite as much stuff as the Zoomed cage does. But what it does have, I actually like a little better. Now, again, they're about the same size, and the cage build and setup is very, very similar. Uh, the main difference, this one has a little bit more sturdy of a clasp mechanism on it. And it has two doors split in the middle. Two front opening doors, whereas the other one had one big door. I like the two doors better. If you have a gecko that is really flighty, I've got a bunch of geckos that are really jumpy. As soon as you open their cage, they're trying to take off to get out of there. It's really easy just to open one door, mist or feed, do whatever you need to do. And that gives your gecko less room to try and escape. It's easier to keep them contained. It's just a little bonus. I prefer this version, this setup better. As for the kit as a whole, um, the first thing we need to look at that it comes with is a thermometer and a hydrometer. Now these are very important. Two of the biggest things with keeping your crested geckos is, is the temperature right and are you keeping it humid enough? The Zoomed kit does not come with anything to give you that information. The Exoterra does. The downside with these is they're both analog, so they're going to be notoriously unreliable. They work well, they're just not as precise as digital instruments would be, but they're a good place to start. They definitely will work, and they're great to have. These guys will have, I believe, we can open one and look, yes. They've got a little sticky back, so you can just pull it right out, put your sticky back on there, and stick it right inside your cage. So they're stuck right there. They're easy to read, easy to see. You know exactly what you're looking at and how your gecko's doing. So that's a great addition. It'd be really nice if the Zoomed cage included something like this, but they don't. So that's a big plus for Exoterra. The second thing the Exoterra cage comes with is a brick of plantation soil. Now, if I am not mistaken, this is a little bit different than the Cocoa Husp substrate, the Eco Earth that the Zoomed comes with. 
it's just a little bit composition, a little bit different composition. The makeup's a little different, but essentially it's the same thing. Personally, I use EcoEarth for our breeding tubs, our lay boxes. This would work just as well. It's the same kind of compressed brick, soak it in water. It expands into soil. A great substrate, good addition. Love this stuff. And then the last thing this comes with is this hide slash plant slash decoration thing. I love this thing. This is awesome. It's a great looking hide. It's gorgeous. It looks great. Great decorations. It's got nice big leaves. Gives your gecko good spots in between these leaves to hide, to be concealed. It's rough, so it'll help with shedding. It's got great climbing space. And my favorite thing is it's hollow in the back. And it's also hollow in the top here. So that gives your gecko somewhere nice to climb inside. It'll be completely surrounded, feel very secure and very safe. The downside is if you're trying to get your gecko out and it puts itself all the way up in the top of there, it'll be hard to get to. But uh, you know, if your gecko is feeling that threatened that it's hiding that much, you shouldn't be trying to pry it out of its cage anyways. I like this a lot. It's a very secure place for your gecko to hide. It's good looking. It's perfect. This I really like. Now the last thing this cage comes with is the background, whereas the other one was a laminated paper background that was just kind of glued to the back of the cage. This one is a styrofoam background that is not glued to the cage. It'll actually pop right out. It's kind of tough to get out, so I'm not going to take it out. But it's good and bad. The styrofoam is really nice. It's a lot easier for the geckos to climb, so it provides an extra climbing space. It looks better. It's textured and 3D, so it's visually a lot more appealing. The downside is if you feed crickets in your cage and the crickets don't get eaten right away by the gecko, the crickets will actually start to eat this styrofoam background. They'll eat right through it, they'll eat little holes in it, and the crickets get inside it and hide and you can't ever get them out. And the main downside is when your crickets eat styrofoam and then your geckos eat the crickets, your geckos are eating styrofoam and that's not good for your geckos. So with this kind of a background, I like it. It's really good looking and works great for climbing. I would just recommend either feeding crickets in a separate cage or a separate tub or just keeping a real close eye on the crickets. If you put five crickets in there and the next morning there's a couple running around, make sure you take those out so they don't start eating the background. Now, like I said, this one doesn't come with nearly as much as the Zoomed does, but what it does come with, I like everything about it. I absolutely love the hide. The plantation soil is a perfect substrate and the gauges are a must have. So this one isn't uh, quite as comprehensive, but everything it has is top notch, great stuff, a good, good, same as the Zoomed. It's not uh, buy it and you're ready to go. You're gonna have to add more to it, but it's a very good setup to start with. All right guys, there you have it. There's a good look at everything that comes in both the Exoterra and the Zoomed cage. Now once again, these two come with different items and they're different prices. They're about $25 different. The Exoterra costs about $90 and for the Zoomed, you're looking at about $115. Now, you might think the Zoomed is a little bit more money, but it comes with more stuff, so it's a better deal. But realistically, I think I'm going to lean towards the Exoterra as my recommendation. Don't get me wrong, they're both good cages, both good places to start to build a setup. And you can't go wrong with either of them. But for my money, I'm going to buy the Exoterra. Uh, my reason being, a lot of the stuff that comes with the Zoomed, I'm not going to recommend you use anyways. The book that it comes with, I mean it's good, but realistically it's not a complete care guide. It's not telling you everything you need to know. If it didn't come with this book, you're not really losing anything. The food that it comes with. I'm chucking this right in the trash and getting a high-end quality diet for my geckos. So this really doesn't do anything for me. The calcium that it comes with is good. That's a plus. However, the Reptivite and Repti Safe Water Conditioner, I'm not using either of these anyways. Again, they're not really doing anything for me. And lastly, the food and water bowl. While they're definitely nice to have, like we talked about, I'm not using this for food. It'll get food all over your gecko's feet. The water bowl is nice, but if you're gonna have to buy another food dish anyways, I'm recommending a magnetic food dish, and a lot of those come with a food and a water dish in them. So if you're gonna have to buy one anyways, you don't really need either of these. Again, by not getting it with the Exoterra, 
you're not really losing anything in my book. So as you can see, once you take away all of the stuff that I don't think you actually need or you're not actually going to use, we're left with pretty similar setups. They both have the same kind of substrate, both really good substrates. The Zoomed does have the calcium that the Exoterra does not have, so that's a plus, but the Exoterra does have the gauges, the temperature and humidity gauges, and I think that is a huge plus because that is something, information you absolutely need that's vital for keeping your geckos healthy. I wish the Zoomed came with these, it doesn't, that's a big plus for Exoterra. And then when it comes to decorations and hide, the Zoomed has a stick, I really like the stick, it's nice, and a pretty subpar plant to be honest. Whereas the Exoterra has this great, very good looking, far more attractive, better looking kind of a plant, kind of a hide, kind of a decoration, all in one object here. I really like this. I would take this over this stick and plant any day of the week. So realistically, like I said, when you strip it down to the stuff you're actually going to use out of these kits, I think the Exoterra wins. But again, they're both good kits, they're both good places to start, whichever one you think you would like better. Go with that and feel confident about it, and then add on the extra things you need. Add in a magnetic food dish, add in more plants, more decorations, add in a vine for some climbing space, and you'll be good to go. Alright guys, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching this comparison video. I really hope this gave you a good idea of what comes in each of these kits and helps you decide which one's better for you. There are links in the description to purchase either of these kits, so check those out, have a look at them, and please check out some of our other videos. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you later.